Hi Taurus, welcome to your May 2018 general tarot reading. It's Rena here. Um, I'm using the Rider Weight deck. If you happen to see my last set of videos, I had introduced a new deck called the Druid Craft, and that was fun to try out, but I'm happy to be back with the, the uh, Rider Weight deck. And um, just to let you know, I wasn't sure if I had said your sign when I started um, recording this uh, just a minute ago. So I did start over again, and I had as the the heart of the matter the Seven of Pentacles. So keep that in the back of your mind, because if that was the, the first card that I picked, um, perhaps um, that plays into this as well. It was in that position, in other words. So, we got the Knight of Pentacles, so we got another Pentacles. Happy birthday to those of you who are born in the month of uh, May or in April, too. I'll, uh, I'll congratulate you, too. Whoa, that's nice. Well, Sun and Taurus for most of the month. Whoa! This card, uh, the Lover's card, is connected to Venus, which is your ruler, so we could even look at it in that way. Wow, lots of... Lots of major arcana. One, two, three, four, five. So perhaps a lot of change. You have your new moon mid-month on the 15th at 24 degrees of Taurus. Okay. So remember this is a general focus. It's also a general reading. So um, if you're looking for a private reading, um, one thing, I just wanted to really emphasize this about private readings, because most of my private readings, I'm using your natal chart, and that's an important point to make, because even though I do a lot of tarot readings on YouTube, I really am concentrated on astrology. I offer tarot readings, you know, by themselves as an option, but I do prefer to um, have a lot of um, astrology with it because I feel that you know your individual chart can really um, show your current status you know in this lifetime your blueprint and it's very helpful in that regard and I feel like these types of readings are very open to suggestion uh, an interpretation. So there's nothing wrong with that because I th I think that's one of the reasons why I like it so to do them so much on YouTube because they are open and that means that more people can feel like they identify with it. So um, I just wanted to, to bring that out about private readings. I have a link to my website below this video if you're interested. And, um, but while you're watching this, don't just be literal about it because you never know, you know, this is, this is for everybody who happens to be a Taurus. So anyway, the central theme is the Knight of Pentacles. And this is your, uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. There's several cards in here that are like your card and this is connected to you. I always, when before I knew which earth sign this was connected to, I always thought of Capricorn for some reason. But now I can see why it would be Taurus. Remember that pentacles are connected to earth energy <clears throat> and earth signs, therefore. Now, um, the other part about that is that the earth energy, when we talk about the energy of the earth, <clears throat> we're talking about... Um, everything practical so your money situation your job situation your health your um, sex life <laughs> with Taurus that might be you know pretty up there on the list of concerns or priorities but um, in terms of your money situation the Knight of Pentacles is about somebody who is really the type of person to just be in that groove of working, coming home, and going back and doing it again the next day. There is a sense of constancy with this person. If this is somebody else, they're not the flashiest person. Somebody, somebody might consider them kind of dull because 
they're just like work worker bees. They're just like working, coming home, doing it again. They have that routine because that's what makes them feel um, good and secure. Um, actually, Taurus is a fixed sign, and the other fixed signs are your opposite sign, Scorpio and Leo and Aquarius, and you all share that love of routine. So a lot of times fixed signs tend to do things, you know, at a certain time each day, and they don't deviate from it. Now, this could simply be saying that you are really driven to earn money because you have a, a specific goal in mind. Maybe you're saving to buy a house or something like that. I'm just going to, you know, continue, not just focus on that card. But, um, huh, there may be a Leo person that is problematic because I get this as the challenge position card. I'm always trying now when I hold this up with this hand, with my right hand, it seems like there's shadows. I think my deck is over here. I wonder if that would, let me see if this makes a difference. Not really. But anyway, um, the strength card is associated with Leo and, and so is, I'm going to just, um, this is the root cause. So we have the Six of Wands. This is connected to Leo. Now, one possibility is if you're with somebody who's a Leo, and it doesn't have to be the sun sign, but you will definitely know if this is that type of person because they tend to be very, um, they could be like, look at me, look at me, and very flashy and things like that. If you're with somebody who's a fire sign type of energy, like even like an Aries person could do this. Um, but I'm the reason I say it specifically Leo is because the strength card connects to that. Okay. But anyway, um, this person, if they are out of work and you're bringing home the bacon, or the faking bacon in my case, being a vegetarian, um, that kind of thing is not going to go over well with that person. If, if you're working and you're doing well and they are not, that can create... Um, stress within the relationship. That other person's ego could be bruised and they could feel like um, inferior to you or and it's all because they don't feel good about themselves obviously. Maybe typically they're not like this but they are starting to doubt themselves because they've had some kind of setback, career setback. The Six of Wands is a card of recognition, you know, accolades for what you're doing. And this other person may feel like you think you're better than they are. And the average Taurus person is not like that. They're not th that egotistical. Maybe if you have Aries in you, you can be a lot more uh, full of yourself. In general, though, a Taurus person isn't going to act uh, superior or smug just because they've had uh, some success recently. The other thing too with that strength card in the challenging position is this could be you where you are getting recognized for your career Taurus and your achievements but you don't have the self-esteem enough to fully accept it. And I just want to tell you that Taurus rules the second house of earned income in astrology but it's also the house of self-esteem. So it's not just about owning luxury goods or the money that you make and, and the value of those things on the physical level. It's also your feelings towards yourself. Do you value yourself? And um, you may be feeling very uncomfortable at getting this praise because it feels unfamiliar to you. And I don't think people fully realize how much of a thing this is, how much this can really happen, and how strange it is, you know, quite frankly. It's strange to feel threatened by success because you know there's something messed up with that, but it does happen. 
and you just have to you just have to be aware of it and see you know be the witness uh, see that this is happening to you and that takes care of a lot of it and also self-inquiry where is this coming from why do I feel this way was I taught that I wasn't good enough and why did why do I still believe what somebody else has said about me and it really you can get to the heart of the matter if you pursue it and it's worthwhile to do so because it eradicates those those negative messages that we say to ourselves so the higher message is the high priestess I was going to say why did I say I, that other deck that I had that new deck they had for the emperor they had the high priest or no was it the hierophant I think it was the emperor I don't know but it was just funny, so I, for some reason I thought of the high priest. But um, maybe it was the magician. I don't know. But anyway, um, the high priestess is a card, obviously, that relates to our connection with spirit, our connection with our higher selves, and all that good stuff. The high priestess, this is an important thing that I want to kind of emphasize with you, okay? Um, to me, and there is, I don't know if people noticed this, but there is a moon symbol at the bottom there. And the moon is a symbol for intuition, but it's also symbolic of um, the something that has not come to light, okay, that can, could come to light. So every month we have a full moon. Well, I think we, ha we had a month where we didn't have a full moon because we had a blue moon the month before. So maybe that's not, well, let's say most months we do. And the time of the full moon is a time when things can come out. At least it's supposed to be that way. Even on the physical level, it can be a time of physical detoxification. So coming out, you know, those, you know, the, the toxic matter, whether it's on the physical level or on the psychic level. So, um, there may be something that needs to come out about a situation. Maybe there is um, a person in your life who is giving you a hard time. And, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't mention this. I mean, that with the strength card in the, in the challenging position, this could be somebody in the workplace, too. And you will find it's possible that maybe you will find something out that explains why exactly they're doing this. It may not be as you thought it was. There may be more to the story. Because a lot of times with the high priestess, it's like you might be getting um, just the tip of the iceberg of the truth, where people are telling you things, but they're not telling you the whole truth. And I always think, gosh, you know, that's pretty irritating that people do that, where they kind of... Um, leave out important facts you know they call it the sin of omission and so that could be something in your in your private life or what have you but um i really think too though these cards are positive you know the knight of pentacles is a positive card so is for sure the the six of wands so the high priestess could be simply asking you to complete all of this you've got your finance finances under control you have your career accolades you know so you think about the sixth house I, I associate that with the knight of pentacles the day-to-day -day grind okay the work ethic then you're looking at the the tenth house of career with the six of wands and it's like our reputation in the world how do how do other people view us do they view us positively do they think we're a success do they think we have talents to give to the world 
and it looks like yes you're going to have that as well so what is left uncovered how about the 12th house you know um, that would be the house of Pisces the house of spiritual awakening or the the spiritual realms okay versus the physical environment of the sixth house the physical body physical health the 12th house is the mental health which by extension you could call the state of consciousness that we're in okay so maybe you need to like cover that that area too and being a Taurus, you may be so geared into that physical dimension that you neglect the spiritual dimension. On the mundane level, the advice is represented by the sun, which is a very positive card. This is about embracing love, embracing success. This is success. Healing, you know, an important one too. Children, all these are themes of, of this card. I, I could have sworn that I got this for you when I did the end of April. Not sure if I did. Maybe there's somebody who, who is in your life. Maybe it is that Knight of Pentacles. And you take that person for granted because you're more interested in somebody who's flashy, who's full of drama. And the reliable person gets the short shrift because they're always there. You know, think about that. I think a lot of people who are reliable, dependable, are not um, appreciated as much as they should be because people take them for granted. So that could be what's happening too. What is coming in? Again, we have the lovers. So this is self-explanatory. Sometimes, though, there could be a choice that has to be made. And there may be two people. I like this um, particular depiction of the lover's card. But there, but there may be a choice that has to be made if it's between two people, or maybe um, I don't necessarily see that there's another job opportunity here, but with the Sun card, there could be, um, I mean, it's a card of prosperity. So I do think that it looks like May is good for you when it comes to money and career, you know, like finances and career um, achievement and love even. But with, uh, for some reason, with the love part of it, there may be someone who is, um, you know, not not appreciating your success, and that is that could be the sticking point. So you may have to decide whether you want to continue on with this person. That might be it. And sure enough, we have here the card of judgment, and this is a card of rebirth, but it's a card that's associated with karma. So. Um, what what seeds have been sh uh, sown will reap a harvest but it doesn't have to be on your end of things taurus this could be someone else this could be that person represented by the strength card in reverse who is they may be wearing down your um health because of their actions also watch out for any kind of tendencies that you have towards um you know, a low, lowered immune system for whatever reason, because that could be the strength in reverse. So it could be like you're having the success, but physically you're feeling run down. And the judgment card is about rebirth. You do have the sun for healing, so that can be good. But um, somebody may not be supportive of you, and you may decide, I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> I'm getting a divorce. I am getting a divorce or I am leaving this relationship. I'm severing ties with this person um, legally. Um, if it's somewhat, but it, if you have like a partnership with somebody, because a lover's card is about a partnership, or maybe you're in a business and there's some, like you have a nemesis, somebody who's like always uh, creating problems, you may decide to form a partnership. Um, that could definitely be true for the lover's card. But you, the, the thing is, it's about you reap what you sow. 
And so if you feel guilty about leaving somebody, remember that you wouldn't be leaving them unless they were making things hard for you. So you don't have to feel like you're a bad person, in other words. Okay, wow. Wow, Taurus, happy birthday once again, your solar return and your new moon. And um, I wish you all the best in May. Take care. Bye.